So yeah. man, uh, how how ain't been going, man? How how the quarantine, the quarantine, and the coronavirus shit treating you and your family? Shit, we cool. We in the house, man. We posted up. It ain't it ain't affect the family and nobody close to you. Uh, I mean, been affected um, by it. Yeah, I had a I had an uncle. Goddamn, had um had some complications from that shit, but nobody in my in this house. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, okay. he got right. He better. You know what I'm saying? That's good, man. What about uh the money and shit? You know, like I know it's been stopping a lot of shows. Was you was you going on any shows, any tours before it happened? Yeah, I had a lot of shit booked up. It, uh, a lot of that shit got pushed back, but it's cool. Like you know what I'm saying? The hustle gonna make money through whatever. Mm, you know what I'm We gonna figure out how to get it, however. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course, man. So I wanna jump right into it. I feel like you know, on my side, I'm in like the DMV area and shit. Like we ain't see you in a long time. Like wh where you been at? Shit, man, that's what I'm trying to figure yeah. out. <laughs> like, like we, we ain't see you, so I'm trying to figure out what's good, man. What you been working on, man? man I see you. nigga been working and working and moving around, man. You know what I'm saying? Trying to do so much shit. It ain't just easy, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie, it ain't easy. Mm -hmm. But a nigga just been moving around working, trying to finish the album and shit. Um, You know, trying to put the marketing schemes and shit together, trying to figure out how to push it, set up tours and shit, you know what I'm saying? Right. You said it ain't easy. What's been the hardest part? I think the hardest part is not having enough time, like, to mm. really complete all the shit I'm trying to complete. Like, it's so much shit a nigga trying to do. Mm-hmm. All right, let's, if we can, let's let's take a step back real quick, man. So, you, at one point in time, you was homeless, and you was yeah, living out the sure. car and everything. You had you, you had kids back then. Yeah. Let's talk about how, how was, how did it feel to go from homeless to Hardaway? Because no, no, no disrespect to your grind, because you've been grinding the whole time, right? But for us, yeah, the people for sure. that didn't know... The people that didn't know you, it seemed like you came out of nowhere, right? Right. How did sure. it how did it feel from going to like that that little shy dude in high school or when you was coming up? Because you said you were shy mad times to everybody know who the Red the Shine is. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, um the feeling is crazy. The few the feeling is unreal. Like it went to a point where I ain't like even to this day, I still don't know who an op is or who a fan is, and I'll be on point. I'm on I'm watching everything. I'm you know what I mean. I still can't believe people really love me. For the music, I still can't believe all my kids got their own room now. I still can't mm. believe, you know what I'm saying? I got my own house now. I still can't believe I'm, you know what I mean? Like, the shit that I'm doing, I never even seen this shit happen. Even with doing music, I thought I was just going to make some money. But a nigga made real money. A nigga made real moves. A nigga made real investments. A nigga made, you know, real changes in people's lives. So I ain't see it like this, but the feeling is unreal. Yo, it's crazy. I was reading a uh, 50 Cent book, right? And he was talking about how, like, he wanted um, G Unit to be like the, to be the next 50 Cent, so he can move on and shit. And I was I was watching a lot of your interviews, and I was like, yo, I wonder if you just even if you get that one single from going homeless to having that one single selling millions and making a lot of money, just getting a house for some people that can be just enough. At that point, when you just had your house and you were taking care of your family, did you ever think about like, man, this is good for me? Nah, because, you know, everything that I achieve, I always want to achieve more. I always want to see more. And plus, I love music. I love music. It ain't like I just do this shit like these niggas who just do it, just to do it because they want fame. I really got love for music. So I'm constantly working and shit. So I'm going to continue to work. But nothing is never enough, just to answer your question. Like, far as music, I want to be great. I want to, I want to, um, you know achieve certain accolades. I want to be one of the greats. You know what I'm saying? One day, whether it be writing music, because I write music too, whether it be writing music, producing music, or artist, or, you know, whatever. I do uh -huh. love music, so, you know what I'm saying? I want to keep going and going. Yo, so how did how did Hardaway even come about? Because I, I seen that uh, DJ Envy, he had bought the song? No, nah, we had did, uh, we did like a, um, like we let him in. You know what okay, I'm but at that same time you was working with um Baby, right? Right. How was how how did that work out? Like like did Baby feel any type of way? Nah, like, how that's, was, that's, was... Oh, that's OG. We good. Mm. So uh, uh, he wanted a nigga to do it win anyway. You know what I'm saying? I learned a lot from OG. He wanted a nigga to win and be on our shit. So you know, it's a lot <laughs> of shit I learned. A lot of shit I wish I would have listened more to of him, but at the same time I learned. You know what I'm saying? Right, and you uh, you you was working with London too, right? Yeah, London on the track. Yeah, so uh, you you still got like real close connections to these guys? Yeah, these folk family for real, like before the music. Damn, so you never like really thought about just trying to sign with Baby? You don't think it 
your career would have turned in a different direction if you would have actually took to sign with Baby? Because I know you're still independent, right? Correct? I believe, I mean, I know for a fact it would have went different. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, this, I ain't never been here before. So I learn, I'm learning. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. You think you could, um, you, you could make something happen in the future with like Baby or London or Indy or even somebody else? Yeah, for sure. I mean, if I really was on it, you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure I can call on and be like, hey, I'm I'm ready to take this shit to another level because I know he's going to support it. You know what I'm saying? He always support everything I do. So I'm pretty sure if it was a phone, it's a phone call. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yo, question. I wanted to talk to you about um your family situation, like your moms and your pops. I, I remember you were saying that um you really, like you moved with your pops at nine. So he's with your moms up until nine years old. And your moms yeah. had you young, right? Like at like 16 or something like that. Yeah, 15. Have you, 15. You speak, you speak yeah. to her anytime soon? Yeah, we've like been, um, our relationship been real good. We've been working on, you know what I'm saying? She call in, check on me. I call in, check on her, you know what I'm saying? We on our shit. Did she ever talk to you about why that transition happened? Because I remember they was asking you a couple interviews. They was like, what was the transition like and why Why you had to move with your pops at nine? And you was like, I mean, you ain't we, never talked to her? You know, I guess at the point of us building, we really ain't even trying to touch back on no shit that's going to hurt both of us, you feel me? So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we we – mess around with it. We, you know what I'm saying? Mom, you remember, she would say, son, yeah, back then, she ooh, ooh, but I'm cool. Like, we, we trying to, you know, focus on the future and work on us being better than what we ever was. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I was uh, thinking about that, man. I'm like, yeah, I know that had to be hard on a young dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of us yeah. take, take that shit for granted, not having our yeah. parents around and shit like that, man. So I'm glad okay. you talked to her and shit. So you about to drop a new project soon. Uh, what is it? Pain 3? Yeah, Pain 3. Pain three. No pain. It's been what two years since then? Since pain two? <laughs> what? What has been one year? Two? How long has been? Yeah, it's been like two years. <laughs> Shit, it's yeah. been two. Yo, my nigga's about to drop. So, who are the features you got on here? Um, a boogie, mm. Boosie badass, Fred O'Bain. Ooh. Um, six hundred breezy, Pacquiao, G baby. I was about to be crazy. Yeah, we got what a, folks on him, Yo, so on Pain 2, I, I think you had Ye Yellow Beezy on the tr on the first track. Yeah. This was, like, I, I was doing the timeline. I think um, you, I don't know when you dropped this around, like, February, maybe? And I don't remember either when I dropped. I can't remember. But I just know I got caught up with Yellow Beezy up one, right? That was my first time hearing his song. Yeah. You had the feature before that. Right. It's well, it depends. You know, you know how music go. Like, you never know when these folk really do their song. Like, Pain Three really two years old. You get what mm, I'm saying? Okay. So when y'all hear it, the first day you hear it is when you hear it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But um, yeah. So you know, I don't know when he actually dropped that, but Yellow Beezy is just a real nigga. You know what I'm saying? He stay right. in touch with a nigga through whatever. Check on niggas. You know what I mean? He check in like, hey, bro, what the fuck going on? You good? So, you know, me and him had a relationship that it was just, you know what I mean? Organic, like, we fucking with each other. Right. Beside music. Like I say, a lot of people I fuck with be beside music. And the same with uh, Russ. I was saying, Russ, I was getting, what I was getting at was, like, it's been two years, right? And yeah. these guys had major years. Like, I mm. mean, like, if they wanted to, they could really almost put you on a song, and it's, it's back lit again. You, you think about yeah, reaching out to them, trying to get the features again? Nah, because it ain't unlit. You know what I'm saying? I'm still okay. lit. I just yeah, yeah, shit. yeah. Already, already, my nigga. Nah, I just I'm... ain't dropped nothing. I'm still lit. When I drop I... this shit, it's over with these niggas, man. I'm talking about, you know, all these extra niggas that's trying to come in. The... You know what I mean? It's over with. Nah, we can talk about that shit because niggas is on some shit, man. I... Yeah. But I, I, I feel like none of this shit is personal. How much, you say a lot of the niggas, well, a couple of the niggas was genuine. You fuck with them outside of the music. How much is it genuine versus it's just it's just business because a lot of times we think niggas cool, and then they show us their their real yeah. colors and they not really cool. These are niggas yeah, a lot of these niggas, yeah, a lot of these niggas ain't nothing. These niggas ain't nothing. They ain't real. They ain't cool. They ain't gangster. They ain't men. They ain't nothing. But for the most part, niggas I fuck with, they who they is. Like you know what I'm saying. From what I see, they humble. They respectful. You know what I'm saying. They handling their business. They stand on their shit. They believe. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, I would say. You know, because I ain't finna associate with no sucker shit anyway, but for the most part, the niggas you ever see me with any nigga I do a feature with, whether it be a big A-list artist or 
B list, C list, however y'all put it together, like that's cause I fuck with y'all. Facts. So we ain't we ain't doing no songs with no corny niggas. We're gonna snap that. We only gotta say no names. <laughs> we only gotta tap into that. We already know. Hey for man, sure. so sometime when when you drop you got the date for the project? Um uh, right now I ain't got no date, but I mean, really, it's, it's, it's this corona shit. Like, once this shit clear up and we can figure out the game plan and how we're going to move the motherfucker, we'll have a date. But right yep. now, it's just like, the city open up partially, I think, down here in London. Like, we ain't going to be able to hit no clubs or nothing like that till, like, May 31st, I believe. Mm, that's May good, 30th. nigga. Nah, I'm cool. I'm coming to Atlanta, <laughs> nigga. Like, what? <laughs> nah, it's looking man, bad nah. for us. It's you looking bad. I'm saying, see, this niggas like you gonna come from y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga. Hell no. Nah. Yo, it's looking bad for us in Maryland, man. They talking about, like, they just trying to lift the stay-at-home order. Like, we just getting off a of stay-at-home. We ain't doing say, parties. Say, this shit been good to a nigga and his family, though. This quarantine uh, shit, being able to really sit down and analyze your folks and understand them and love them and see shit you ain't see for real, though. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. it. I ain't even gonna flip. It took for a pandemic to happen for niggas to really get in tune with themselves. Yeah, and Real even like shit. even like you said, even the ones that's closest to you, man. Like I don't know your situation. Like me and my girl, you know what I'm saying? Like we've been we get, we've been having a uh, just more bonding time. You get know what I'm saying? Just, yeah, just exactly. learning each other, like uh, yeah. away from the bullshit. Because you know, without the pandemic, the niggas is on the go. You know what I'm saying? We exactly. don't even have time to focus. So like, it's yeah. definitely helping. I already know it's a pull up and pull out. Shit, hey, baby, what's happening? You good? Yeah, woo woo. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. I know. Yo, besides yeah, yeah. the besides the music though, man, how you been mentally though, man? Cause I um shit, man, mentally, I'm I mean shit, I'm I'm Devo, I'm Drez, I'm I'm me. Like I don't think that's ever gonna change until I get done with music, honestly. Uh -huh. Um, hey, man to man to man, if if you don't mind, yo, um, I was uh watching your your Breakfast Club interview, right? And you were saying how like it was a situation back in the day where you got hit in the head with a brick. And yeah. then you got and you got stabbed on your and your um and your finger. Cut on my hand. Cut. Yeah, you got yeah. cut on your you got cut on your hand. Can we talk about that real quick? Yeah. All right, cause you got a you got a son, right? And I was talking uh, to a couple people, and I was like, "Yo, how do I feel like when we was coming up? I don't know your age or whatever, but when we was coming up, we never had to sit down of what was appropriate and what wasn't appropriate when we were approaching women. Oh yeah, for now, sure. Now, we weren't. Yeah, we ain't never had it. But you had you had to experience that at a young age, like you had to yeah, go through yeah. the fuck ups, right? Going through yeah. those fuck ups, I'm pretty sure that changes your perception of how to approach women. And now you gotta, it's almost like you gotta have that conversation with your son. I mean, the conversation I, I already been having these convos with my son, like man, honestly, and this honest, like I don't have nothing against, or uh, 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 let me say this better, I'm not no um, what's the word they be saying um sexist or womanist mm -hmm. or no shit like that. But I tell my son, fuck a bitch. Like, nigga, get on your grind, handle your business, and get some money. Because that little shit gonna distract you. That little shit gonna knock you off your pivot, man. You gotta get it. Like, when you get older, fine, love. Before that, my nigga, handle your business. You got family and shit to take care of. You got your mom, your brothers, your sister. Like, nigga, handle your business, man. Fuck a bitch. But outside of love, right, I'm talking about just the way us as men, and that's why I was hoping we could have this transparent conversation, just us as men, when we was growing up, we wasn't taught how to treat women correctly and how to really, like, keep our hands to ourselves, you know, like, you know what I'm talking about. And, I um, mean, but you know, as a child, it don't matter if you were a child, you still gonna smack a hole in the ass, you know what I mean? I you mean... Still gonna, you still gonna, listen, that just nigga nature, man, you still, like... But it's nigga nature because we never was taught, though, you don't believe, you don't think so? I mean, I believe, I can understand what you're saying, but even today, like, my son, yeah, he getting in trouble in school for stupid little shit like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I could tell him, but you know how it is when you a child. What the fuck can you tell him? Shit. I mean, like, shit. man. Honestly, man, the way shit going with the Me Too movement and, like, everybody just coming out about a bunch of old shit is like, yo, I'm, listen, keep your hands to your motherfucking self. You know what I'm saying? Well, see, that's what I'm saying. See, that's, let me tell you what I think that is, right? Now... For the people who really getting fucked with, like, you know, the shit that was inappropriate. Yeah, uh -huh. okay, I understand them, but come on, man. Kids running around, playing tag, grabbing ass. You know what I mean? Like, wrestling with the bitches and the niggas in the neighborhood, but you hunching on the bitch. Like, that's young nigga shit. That's young bitch shit. Like, everybody do that. So, 
yeah, as you get older, you know what I'm saying, when people understand who they want to be in, you know what I mean, let's say like high school or, I mean, really whatever age, I ain't, all I'm saying, simply saying is boys is boys, girls is girls. They be on their shit too. Mm -hmm. Bitches want to play basketball with a nigga just to put their ass on a nigga dick. Like, you know what I'm saying? Bitches want to play tag. Bitches want to get caught. You know what I'm saying? Niggas want to mm -hmm. catch a bitch. So I just tell my son straight up, like, you know what I'm saying? Chill, man. Fuck a bitch. <laughs> Period. Right, 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 right. All the way yep. around. Like, if nah, you that's a, that's... stutter that hoe, you good. You know what I mean? You going to get in trouble if you stutter that hoe. That's a hundred percent. Yo, let's talk about the roller coaster ride. Cause I feel like, yo, when um you've been through the roller coaster ride, and a lot of niggas think it's sweet out here. Like a lot of niggas think they're gonna get on and they're gonna stay on forever and they're gonna have 10 number one hit records and shit like that. And then when they don't get that number one hit record or they don't get the record that they, they thought they made and it ain't as lit as they think it was, then right. they wanna quit. Let's talk about that roller coaster ride. Like, how do you handle that, man? How do you handle that mentally? I mean, um, I think I'm humble, you know what I'm saying, naturally. So now you always respect. You always was a humble dude. I res I fuck with it for real. Thank you. I appreciate it. So me personally, I just kind of I learned from everything, a win or a loss. You know what I'm saying? So with the roller coaster of this music industry, it's kind of like if you ain't consistent, even when you are consistent, you know what I'm saying. You got to kind of be like the best at what you're doing. Like mm -hmm. if let's just say a nigga come out and he sound like Bryson Tiller. Mm. Like, why would we listen to you and not listen to Bryson Tiller? Like, what makes you better than Bryson Tiller? So in your mind, in order to keep your shit going, you got to figure it out. Different mm. flow, different swag, different style, video, the way you do your interview. Like, it's more than music. Like, niggas think this shit is just getting in the booth and rapping, man. This shit is, is business. Like, if you ain't got your bed in together, of course you're going to go on that roller coaster ride because you're going to think you're a big head. Ain't nobody going to be able to tell you nothing. Like, this shit is more, it's deeper than rap, real shit. Deeper than rap, deeper than singing. You got to have connections. You got to have, you know what I'm saying? Your your, your communication skills got to be up to par. Your relationships got to be built. You know what I'm saying? This shit, just like anything else in life, like being in the street, being in the, in the work environment, being in college, like, you got to be in your circle, stand in your circle, and be on your shit in your circle. Yo, I think us being genuine men, right, and a lot of guys that just start in the music industry and business in general, we be so genuine that we forget that we got to handle business first. Yeah. Let's, it let's get like that sometimes. It get like that. How do you, Especially how, when you up, up, and you like, man, nigga, nigga I'm looking at a quarter million all made this weekend, nigga. You see that shit in that bag, nigga? That's from on the road this weekend, man. Right? So, uh -huh. you know what I mean? You get to the strip club, you throwing money, you living life, city, bit like, yeah, so it get like that sometimes, but you gonna get a reminder, though. Trust me. Being, being in it and seeing it firsthand, give us, like, three key factors of the business life, of the business life or the business aspect of the industry that we should keep, we should uh, just consider when we when we handle on business when we in the industry three three key factors some relationships are more important than money straight up like facts if you can keep good relationships with certain people and stay on their good side it's certain strings they can pull to help you get through what you like they can do the shit you can't do you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like they can reach people you can't reach they can talk to the man you can't talk to so some relationships are better than uh money um Staying consistent. You got to stay consistent. Like, if you say you're going to do something, you got to do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the Well, right now, I say the radio shit ain't like how it used to be. It's more I, screaming and shit going on. But mm -hmm. let's just use, like, if you fucking with these radio people and these screaming people, Apple, Spotify, so all that shit like that, like, you got you to gotta fuck with them. You got to be on your shit. You got to do some shit like Hey, y'all got a event, y'all got this, y'all pulling on, I'm support, y'all support me. You know what I mean? Build a relationship. And the third thing would just be far bidding, man. Just stay on your shit, man. Just, just don't get lazy. Don't don't let this don't 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 let this shit blind you. Like nigga, this uh -huh. shit can be gone tomorrow, nigga. Like that, you know facts. Now nah, so, and a lot of times just doing shit out of love is gonna get you love back. I remember the story with your DJ. I don't know if he's still your DJ, how like he was playing your shit in the club. Way before you met him and shit, and you was trying to pay the nigga. He was like, "Nah, I'm oh, good." Yeah. And that just that nigga became yeah. a DJ and shit like that. Like a lot yeah, of niggas, they take DJ that shit for granted. Yeah, he's still my DJ. Uh huh. 
Nah, salute to yo, yeah. man. A lot of niggas be looking for that money. They missed the opportunity, man. But nah, y'all, I'm definitely fucking with you. Whenever you get the date, just get your people to send me the music, and we going to play it down here and all that, man. You already know it's all love. Oh, man. yeah, for sure. I need to get out there, man. Fuck. How I been hey. out there for y'all with the corona shit, though, like? Yo, this shit, they got niggas on lockdown, bro. Like, this is some bullshit. Like, we can't go to no gyms. We can't go to... Ain't no malls open. Like, I went to North Carolina and shit, and, like, the malls was open. It ain't a lot of stores open in the mall, but the malls open. See, see it's niggas like you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, see what I'm saying? Man. Y'all coming from over there trying to come. Now, nah, <laughs> nah, that's that bull. Listen, that's that bullshit. Because you, you, uh, you're a spiritual guy my, yourself, and you said it, too. So yeah. I ain't really, I listen, God got my back. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, got, real G. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, man. We, nah, that really how I feel too. I'm covered in this blood. No, nah, we being safe, be though. Yeah. Nah, we being safe. Uh, 100%. Nah, we being safe. Like, you in the car right now. I'm in the, the time. Nah, I was just working out. <laughs> I was just work. I was, listen, I ain't want, I ain't want to miss the interview. I was just on the field working oh, out. Shit. I got to get the workout hey. in. Listen. <laughs> nigga, I'm going to get you on the workout next, nigga. We're going to. Get I can't this wait, month? but I'm trying to lose this shit. I ain't going to lie to you, nigga. I'm, hey, <laughs> I'm trying to pull a Gucci, man. You hear me, nigga? I'm trying oh, no. Nah. Gucci was wild. I'm trying to Gucci. transform, man. I'm finna be built like Rocky, man. You hear me? Man, you on some bullshit. We got to get in the gym. Stop playing. We here with it. I'm dead serious. I'm trying huh? to get like that. You feel? I'm trying to, hey, I'm trying to stand up on that motherfucker like this, nigga. I want to stand to me in the front yard. You Facts. <laughs> Facts. No, man, but I appreciate it again, man. It definitely was good talking to you, bro. Uh, definitely keep sure. in touch. Send me the music, whatever you need help with, man. And just ain't on no industry shit, just because I appreciate it. All right, 100.